Every time we come to the States and we do something that you ain't heard before and you, you, you can't identify with it, everybody sort of sits there going, so this is one of those. This is off the new album and uh, all being well we should have it out before the night start drawing in because it's like a summery album really. And this is one of the songs from it, it's called Dancing Days. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is episode 21 of ZepFan, the Led Zeppelin podcast, where you guessed it, we are a podcast dedicated to Led Zeppelin. Our guest today has seen Led Zeppelin in concert more than a few times. He attended several of the iconic LA Forum shows, he was at the famous Bonzo's birthday party in 1973. He witnessed all the LA Forum shows in 1975. And in 1977, he saw the incredible Listen to This Eddie and the infamous For Badge Holders Only shows. In total, he has seen Led Zeppelin in concert 14 times. His username on LedZeppelin.com is Strider. Please welcome to the ZepFam podcast, Sean Hathwell. So Sean, let's dive into these your shows from my understanding, it sounds like you were 10 when you f saw your first show. Well, 72 was, uh, 72 was, it was June 25th, 72, which, you know, has been released now on the How the West Was Won. Um, Cause I, those were, that was the first show. Um, I had finally, you know, browbeaten my poor parents into saying, okay, you can start going to shows. So by that point, I'd already had a few concerts under my belt i had my first show was black sabbath and yes at the swing auditorium right. in san bernardino which was on uh saint patrick's day uh it was a friday march 17 1972. i'd had a few shows under my belt so and of course one of the stipulations my parents said you gotta wear earplugs <laughs> you know <laughs> you gotta wear earplugs that's smart thinking you actually know. i would imagine well, because that was that was that was their fear that like, like my I would blow my ears out with the loud sound right. and that I would and they were worried about because you uh, certain some reports you would hear rock concerts there'd be fighting or someone would get out of control or the police blah 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 but you know for the most part so like at that time my parents were separated so my stepmom got me do you remember there's a organization called um big brother mm, yeah sure. where you have like kind of a, a mentor and parents would sign you up and you'd have a big brother if you know you didn't have your father around or whatever and he would kind of like act. so my dad was kind of like you know he was kind of a flake in some ways so sometimes he would show up when it was his visitation sometimes he wouldn't so my stepmom signed me up for the big brother program and my big brother that i got was into photography and also like rock music. So it was he that was, he was the one getting these tickets for me. I wasn't going out there at 10 years old, getting these tickets. Right. No, he was the one. And then of course my dad, he would, whenever I would be able to get him to get a ticket and go to a show, cause he like, I think he took me to Emerson like a Palmer and so, you know, he liked them. And so it was kind of like a combination. Sometimes it would be my dad taking me to a show other times, mostly time, most of the time it was my big brother who was getting tickets and we, I'd go to shows with him. So when I was finally allowed to go to concerts, you know, and, and then of course, you know, all these were like, kind of like these, you know, shows and the stones were amazing. This was, you know, Mick Taylor was still in the band, um, Black Sabbath and yes, they were amazing. And, but when Led Zeppelin, when I would, you know, got the news and he told me, you know, I got the news, hey, I got Led Zeppelin tickets, we're going to see them. Oh. Of course, you know, they were crappy seats. Um, we were in Colonnade 29, row 19, and seats uh, 7 and 9, I believe. We were way up in the Colonnade, which is like in the Forum. They had the floor, they had the Loge, which was the first yeah. section above the floor, and then they had the Colonnade section which was you know the what you would call the nosebleeds although it's kind of funny in retrospect you go to you if you go to a show like staple center now or or which is i think called crypto arena but if you go to a show like that and then you go to the forum you realize oh the forum's not that bad after all because right, right, the right. forum was actually smaller than the staple center and yeah. more intimate and everything 
But at that early juncture, I had already come to realize that it's like, what is a concert? Okay. It's like certain bands treat concerts in different ways. Now, some bands would just go out and they just play their songs exactly the way they are on record. Right. You know, they just, that's it. They're going to, they're not going to deviate from the pattern. Um, even that with just a few concerts under my belt, I, I was still old enough and aware enough to appreciate that. Okay. There's, there's different ways that bands can approach a concert. And so going to Led Zeppelin, all I had was their first four albums to go by. I hadn't gotten into a Led Zeppelin bootleg. I hadn't been able to find or even get into the world of bootleg albums yet. So I had no idea what they sounded like in concert. I was going in kind of green. So I don't know, oh, are they going to sound like the record? Are they going to, you know, I mean, I, you would hear things in certain articles, but again, I didn't have, there wasn't enough, uh, an archival base, so to speak, where I had enough concert reviews to go by either in the local LA times or in the magazines. Cause most of that, t- most of the articles that I had read up to that point, just focus on the reviews of their albums, not so much their concerts. So I didn't really have much in the way to go by what a Led Zeppelin concert was going to entail. Um, so I just remember, you know, thinking, okay, I hope I hear this song, you know, like you go to a concert, you, oh, you want to hear this song? You know, like I knew I wanted to hear most of Led Zeppelin four. I wanted to hear days confused. I wanted to hear how many more times, you know, I wanted right, to hear right. all of side two of Led Zeppelin three or whatever, you know, like, you know, so I had certain songs in my mind that I, oh, I hope they play this song. Um, but and I kind of figured, yeah, they're going to be loud because that was that was usually the first adjective. Whenever you talk to someone about Led Zeppelin in concert, it was like, oh, they're loud, you know. And even the critics, oh, they would complain about, oh, they're loud. Which I just remember uh, being that just kind of like, oh, I'm finally getting to see them because um, again, given the period of the time. You just never knew when you were going to wake up and some rock star was going to be dead right, of an overdose right. or an accident or something like that. So the fact that the, you know, school was out, it's summer and you, you know, I'm going to see Led Zeppelin and it was just like, Oh, okay. You know, and, and, and there's no opening band. This is, I think probably the first concert that I was going to where there was no opening act, which was you know, oh, it's right, wow, right. no opening band. You know, that's how we're, you know, that was kind of, okay, cool. No opening act. And it was also because all the previous shows I had seen up to that point, Black Sabbath was at Swing Auditorium. Uh, King Crimson was at Santa Monica Civic. The Stones was at the Palladium and Long Beach Arena. Um, I might have seen one of those, but every show I had seen up to this point had taken place elsewhere. So oh, cool. not only was this my first Led Zeppelin concert, it would be my first time going to see a concert at the Forum. Oh, very cool. The Inglewood Forum. There was a buzz about that building, even apart from rock concerts it was where you know you heard the lakers play it was where sporting events happened so Mm -hmm. um and when you you would drive up so we were so i was living in costa mesa at the time and so you drive up the five the 405 uh the 405 freeway up from orange county into inglewood off the, you know, just off the uh, LAX airport there, you get off there, there's Randy's Donuts on Manchester Boulevard near the airport with the big giant donut sign uh, rising above the freeway. And you take Manchester all the way down to uh, Prairie, and that's where the forum is, right on the corner there of Prairie and Manchester. And you kind of see that iconic circular building with the white pillars. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the planes flying overhead every 30 seconds, it seems like there'd be <laughs> yep. uh, a plane flying, descending into LAX. 
so close that you could almost feel like you could touch the planes. Um, we got there, you know, obviously, I, I mean, we got there plenty of time. Uh, you know, we probably got there, you know, because you know, there was no opening act, but we figured, you know, 7.30, we probably got there maybe a half hour, probably. It was, you know, definitely still light, but you could see, the, you know, the parking lot full up. And and that was the other thing is, like, at that time, you know, the, the whole tailgate scene oh, yeah. uh, in the 70s of parking, you know, people getting, you know, drinking. Back when they let you do at that. At that time, people kind of, like, left you alone. Now it oh, seems yeah. like, uh, you know, the cops and people, yeah. they, they don't want you to, you know, party out in the parking lot. But back then it was just, like, kind of like, wow, look at all these people. Like, you know, it was like – and there was a few kids – but it seemed mostly like high school age people older than me, definitely. Right. Um, and then the college kids that we're into. Your first concert was June 25th, 72 at the forum. And then you went yeah. two days later to the Long Beach arena, June 27th. Now, what prompted you to go? Did, did you see the band and like, Oh, we need to go see him again. Or was that already on yeah, the schedule. Here's here's the thing. You know what happens when reality exceeds the dream? <laughs> That's what the June 25th, 1972 concert was like. Okay. Anything I could have wanted or what, I mean okay, yeah, they didn't play when the levee breaks. Okay. That was, you know, I was kind of time. bummed. Yeah. I was I was kind of bummed uh about that, you know, and the, you would hear people yelling, how do you know when the levee breaks, you know, <laughs> people shouting out stuff, people shouting out songs. But I always what always cracks me up about concerts is, you know, people that shout out stuff after the first or second song. You know, it's <laughs> like, like people it hold on. <laughs> It's like, dude, it's like the second song. I'm sure they're going to get around the whole right, lot of right. eventually. You know, right. it's like, you know, I can understand if you're yelling out, you know, something obscure or deep cut, but yelling out rock and roll or a whole lot of love after the first or second song. It's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> I think they're going to play that, yeah. dude. I think they'll get to it. We got a, it's like uh, Robert Plant. You say we got a long time, you know, and that was the thing. That concert was so it was just indescribably good now i realize there are people you're that, talking about the first one the forum show or the i'm talking about the show? first the, okay. i'm talking about the first one the okay. first one got it and and that's what it was the first one was so amazing and just so spine tingling where you're the hair is on the back of your neck and your arms and you're just like can't believe what you're seeing you're almost like having an out of body experience right. and you're just like, how can a band be so good? How can they play for so long? How can they keep coming? You know, stones didn't do an encore. When I saw them, they left the stage. They did not come back. And the crowd said, oh, okay, they stopped. And then they kind of, when the lights went up, the not crowd booed so and they were, you know, and even black Sabbath, you know, they, they did one, maybe two songs for an encore. Zeppelin came back like four or five times. The, the crowd was, wow. I almost felt bad for the band because it's like, <laughs> Jesus, you know, let them leave this, you know, let them go home. They got another show. To, you know, it's like, right. it's unbelievable. It was like, they just kept coming back and each encore just kept amping the crowd up more and more. So it was like, as soon as that concert was over, we didn't even leave us. I, I couldn't leave. I just like, I just, it took me a while to just like, I didn't, couldn't process what I just seen because it had just moved me so much and it surpassed whatever expectations I had going to the show. It was beyond, beyond what I was ex expecting that I, it took me a while to just sit there and process. And then and plus, there were so many people, you know, you're like, oh, you're just going to be stuck in a line of people trying to get out. Anyways, might as well just stay there and wait for the crowd to thin out. And it was, it was, you know, when we were in the car, that was finally, I said, oh, I got to see that again. I got it. Let's go right. to Long Beach. Yeah. They're playing it. I got to, I got to witness that again. I can't not, not see that. I have to see that again. And there were certain things why um, let's start with let's start with just 
the music itself. Okay. So as I've said, I've, you know, the previous concerts I've been to, there was basically the bands that played the songs as they were. And then the, and a band like Grateful Dead, that kind of free form. Led Zeppelin was like a combination of everything. There were some songs that they played just like the record, like dancing days. Although, you know, I had no idea what the hell that song was. Cause you know, we hadn't heard, yep. you know, we were a year, still a year away from, <laughs> right. you know, the new album. So the fact that the band was playing all these new songs was, you know, over the hills and far away. Again, what song is this? I don't, you know. Um, so there was like the songs that they played kind of like stayed to the script. And then there were, you know, again, then they're, they're, they also did the freeform stuff, like Days Confused. But the difference was bands like Grateful Dead and later bands that I would see, like the jam bands like Fish and so forth, and even bands like the Allman Brothers or Pink Floyd, they would go into certain sonic textures and stuff like that. But... You never really could say that they would go into a punishing pace. Their music pretty much stayed in kind of a a loping kind of pace. You know, Grateful Dead had true drummers, but they never really were like, you know, playing fast for the most part. Most of their songs stuck to a, a very light cadence. And even Pink Floyd, um, there, especially in the early days, there are certain tunes, certain certain periods where, like in Echoes or something like that, where Nick uh, Mason might get up, uh, you know, get ahead of steam going on his drums. But especially by the time of Dark Side of the Moon and definitely by the time of Wish You Were Here, their songs have a pretty kind of set, you know, they don't really get into a very punkish vibe very much. Whereas Zeppelin, when they did Days of Confuse, I couldn't believe it because I literally got lost in that song. You know, because they start, they start, oh, it's Days of Confuse and it's heavy and it's just doom laden. And then the riff comes in, okay. But by the time of the violin bow thing and, and just all that free form, and then they're going into the second, you know, the fast part of the solo, and then they're going into the, the funky, you know, it's just, it's just going on and on. And you think, and you, you lose track of time. You think, right. oh, are they still in digs? You know, and then they come back in after 20 minutes or so, they come back into the verse. And you're like, oh, this is still days from <laughs> right, so You're right, like right. thinking, oh, it's, it's, have, they, have they got into something entirely different? It's like they've taken you on this weird journey into outer space, and then they've circled back again into orbit. And then they finish off with another crazy, you know, solo with the wild, you know, it's just, it was just like 30 minutes where you just like, I was, and then just the pace. Because while Jimmy's soloing, Bottom and Jones, are feverishly, you know, playing a dinner, 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 dinner. And that's and that right. was the, the other thing is that there, the sound of Led Zeppelin in concert was a physical entity of itself because yes, it was loud, but one of the unique aspects of seeing Led Zeppelin in concert was that Bonham's drums came through better than just about any other band I ever saw in concert. And you literally felt it in your gut, you know, and, you know, sometimes later in 72, of course, they had the drone. They had that opening weird drone before the band kicked into immigration song, immigrant song. Mm -hmm. But other times they would come up and, you know, there was no opening tape. It was just the band would come on and they would kind of tune it up. And so you would, you know, bottom would like hit that kick drum. And it's like, as soon as you did, you'd hear that wave, that sonic wave would just punch you in the chest. Right, you right. go, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's a good thing I brought my earplugs. <laughs> um, and the characteristic of the way the band would sound in the arena was also unique in that a lot of times I felt like you had just this 
solid bottom, depending on where you were sitting, you had, you know, Jones and Bonham, you know, laying down the bass and drums and plant would come over the PA and depending on how close you were to the stage or whatever, depending on how close you were to the stage, me, I never really got tickets that, you know, was very few and far between that I was able to get like tickets really close to the stage. Most of the time I was up in the loge or the colonnade or, or further back before. So you basically got, you know, plants voice coming from the PA um, and you got most of the sound coming there. You get some stage, but everything seemed to be like coming at you. And then it was like Jimmy's guitar would just kind of like, like ride over thing, ride over every other sound. And sometimes he would, you know, have the sound guy, he would, he would like kind of cross fade it where like he would shift it to the left or right if he was doing his, you know, echo thing during Days Confused or whatever. But it was just, a, it was a very, it was almost like you would hear the band coming straight at you, but also kind of like swirling around you. Jimmy's guitar would like sometimes feel like it was strafing your head like you know machine gun bullets you know coming from an airplane um just it just had that kind of that's how i felt like at least back then i felt like you know oh my god jimmy's like you know like he's shooting a machine gun he's yeah. just strafing the crowd with bullets of you know fusillade of notes you know rapid you know it's just it was a kind of just uh, the impression i got at, at a young age yeah. um so the physicalness of the sound but the other thing that was physical about the band was watching them play, watching Jimmy cavorting around the stage and the way he attacked his guitar. I mean, I think only Pete Townsend really attacked right. his guitar with as much force as Jimmy and watching bottom just take no prisoners. Know, it's just the way he hit and how hard. And then you're thinking two hours into the show and then he's got to do a, you know, a half hour drum solo. And then they're doing a half hour of whole lot of love <laughs> yeah. and they're careening from song to song. And they're, you know, Jimmy's leading, you know, and it's, it's almost like a whiplash pace. And it's just the physical, how are, I remember thinking, how are, are his fingers not falling off? <laughs> how is bottom not just falling over dead watching them exert this physical effort just to play these notes and, and everything. And then that was, so that was just the overall physicalness of Led Zeppelin, not just the force of the sound coming out of the speakers and the PA and the sound that was hitting you in the gut and scraping your head, but just the effort, so, the some sweat, kind of presence that the they toil had, yeah. they put into playing those notes, how hard they had to work. You know, I get so mad. Well, I mean, it's, you know, I'm an adult <laughs> now. It seems so silly to say I get so mad. But especially back then, you would read, you know, reports in Rolling Stone or you'd see reviews <laughs> or you'd see people and they would call Led Zeppelin a lazy band. It's like, yeah. are you nuts? I mean... No, there's, you know, there's many things you could call that Zeppelin. Lazy was not one of them. Yeah. I mean, it took an amount of stamina. And considering that they weren't exactly, other than Bottom, they're pretty frail looking guys. I mean, Jimmy Page, <laughs> when you look at Jimmy, it's like, how is he holding? And, he, and he's playing, he's not playing like light strats. Right. He's, he's playing like he Les Paul, solid hours, body yeah. guitars and the double neck guitar. I mean, it's like, right. uh, I mean, so that, and especially, you know, I'm 10 years old. I'm like, I'm just sitting there watching that whole show with my jaw on the floor. I'm thinking, oh God. I mean, it's like, and every song was just like, there were songs that you that, and and it's like yes, there are songs that you want to you want to sound like the record and for for like Heartbreakers sounded pretty much like the record yep. to me. Immigrant song yep. sounded amazing. And fortunately, I got to see, you know, my first show. I got to see him just before Plant ruined his voice. Right. I got to see him just when he still had enough left that he had some range. Um, and it's funny, like you could probably go and do a nitpick thing. And go over the 1972 show and say, oh, yeah, they flubbed this note here. Right, right. I did, you know, and I did notice that they, I believe they did flub, like, 
Um, I think it was that's the way I think they might have like plant missed a verse or something. Like they kind of they flubbed some segue, and because you know I you know was enough of a fan um where i had you know memorized you know a lot of the lyrics of the songs up to that point so i kind of knew oh that lyric you know it's different or he changed like black dog he totally screwed up black dog yeah well he's always yeah in 72 and 71 he did a little bit different lyrics as well yeah the whole jelly roll bit you know (laughs) so jelly roll (laughs) and of course stays confused he 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 was like kind of like long you know he just didn't really didn't really but you know didn't care about the lyric you know but that you know you know this is again that's hindsight but yeah so for for the most part it was just like one of just like oh my god i expected this and i got it but i got so much i mean i hadn't seen you know they played nearly four hours no break no intermission sweat flying in everywhere the crowd going ape shit you know, or you know, and then that was the other thing. You know, the the Zeppelin crowd was. You could say there were some unruly types. Where I was sitting, I was kind of far away from you know whatever fights were going on. You know, because you know you got some people's got their you know wrong ticket. They're sitting in someone's seat, and there's someone throwing cherry bombs, and there's firecrackers going off everywhere, and you know there's a mushroom cloud of you know marijuana smoke. And frisbees are flying around, and you know people are bringing instruments. They're bringing kazoo's to play along with the band, or tambourines. <laughs> it was, you know, because we're still we're still in the period of like there's still kind of the sway of the hippies right. in '72. The hippies hadn't quite disappeared yet, so there's a, still this notion of like, hey, let's go to a show and let's bring instruments and let's, you know, let's, you know we're, we're going to be one with the band and, you know, let's, you know, just kind of like, okay, we're still kind of at the tail end of that. Right. Uh, the glam period hadn't quite kind of taken over yet to this to the extent it would in like 1973. Right. Well, that's a good segue. So let's, so those are your two shows in 72. So we have uh, LA Forum, June 25th, June 27th. Seven, that's 27th was Long Beach Arena, which is a little smaller place. It's a smaller venue, a little echoey, uh, maybe slightly better sound for the most part than the form as far as acoustically, depending on where you're sitting. It's, it's about 14,000 at the Long Beach Arena, whereas the form is like around 18,000. So, but again, it was just one of those things where, yeah, I said, I, I want to see Zeppelin again. Let's go. Uh, can cool. we go to Long Beach? Yeah. And so my big brother, he he was managed. He got tickets, which you know, uh, five six bucks a pop, which in today's inflation would be around forty six dollars or so. Hmm. So it's like imagine seeing a band that you like for forty six fifty dollars today. <laughs> That's can't go about wrong with that. what it was. Yeah, I mean you're not going to see. I I, I think. I don't think you can see a band less than a hundred bucks these days. No. Um, but so that's how that happened. We, he was willing to uh, fork over for the money for the, the Long Beach show. And again, it was, it was more of the same, different and shorter, obviously not as much, many encores, but again, it was just, yeah, it was just the thrill um, to throw them playing that set list, playing, see, hearing Stairway live and hearing the stair, uh, solo done differently. The thrill of them doing an acoustic song um, and the whole set, the acoustic set. They stylistically covered so much ground. And it was just a four piece on top of that, that the range of music that you would hear during their concerts. So that was the other thing that impressed me about Led Zeppelin was just the sheer diversity of music. But it was all filtered through that Led Zeppelin Led Zeppelin prism so that no matter what the roots were, no matter what diversity you were hearing, it all came through as 
Led Zeppelin. Right. And I think 1972 was interesting because they did the acoustic and it was the last of the medleys too. 73. They it was the last of the medleys. Everything. Although 73, they still kind of did a few medleys yeah, in 73. But, but yeah, nothing 72 like the 72. Was, you know, but no, nothing like the 72 where you're hearing, you right. know, uh, Elvis Presley and then the old blues stuff. And, you know, which again, irks me to death when Jimmy Page cuts all that stuff out when he puts out the official release. Right, right. All that encore stuff, the, you know, doing uh, Louie Louie and, you know, with the organ, John, John, John Paul Jones starting off with Louie Louie and they go into the song and then they careen into Sly Stone's uh, Everyday People and then they go into Thank You. I was like, you know, I'm why did you it's not copyright, put that though, on the they album? have to pay for that. <laughs> Well, so what? Pay the pop. It would you would sell so many more copies if you just put the whole full show out. Right. You get so much more of the buzz of the show when you do that. The when you don't effect, cut yeah. out not just the not just the encores that he cuts out. Think about how many of the plantations, how many of Robert Plant's jokes and asides that he cuts out. Right. And that. And part of the problem with that for me is that it feeds into one of the threads of criticism that Rolling Stone and other people like to throw at Led Zeppelin in the 70s was that Led Zeppelin was just this inhuman behemoth of a band. They were just like too big and too impersonal. Their shows were like Nazi rallies and blah, blah, blah. And when you listen to their, you know, when you go to the shows, when you went and you saw how Robert Plant, he didn't really have like that kind of pat stage patter that a lot of bands would have. Hey, hello, Cleveland. Are you ready to rock? Rah, rah, rah. You're, you're the greatest guy. He was kind of like every show had like a different kind of vibe depending on Robert oh, yeah. Plant's mood. Totally. And he would, re- right. he would react to things in the he would react to things in the crowd. He would notice something happening in the crowd. Hey, what's going on over there? Oh, this guy selling bootleg shirts. Oh, oh, there's a guy in the fight. Hey, stop that. You know, hey, stop throwing firecrackers. Or so, But he would, like, talk to the crowd, not scream at the crowd. He would talk to you like you were all sitting in a room, and he was playing for you. And especially during the acoustic sets, it would just be like you were just sitting around a campfire. And they were just, hey, the band's got acoustic guitars. We're just going to sit around a campfire and sing. And and so when Jimmy Page cuts that part out, that's kind of like the part that humanized the band to people. It made them relatable, and it gave the the uh, the show such a, a warm vibe that when Jimmy edits those things out on these official releases, it just plays into the whole aspect of, oh, yeah, Led Zeppelin was just impersonal. They didn't care about the audience. They just came out. And I just feel it just really would help the reputation of, of the non-fans of the band, people that aren't fans or that are the just kind of casual fans. And they, they get their information about Led Zeppelin from Rolling Stone or these YouTube comments uh, that people say, oh, the band, you know, it would just help, I think, improve the band status as a concert act if people could see what they were like, warts and all. Okay, so they flub a note here and there. Or if Plant makes an off-color joke, big deal. I mean, and that's part and parcel, I think, why the band, Peter Grant and Jimmy, maybe didn't, weren't as diligent as other bands in recording their concerts is that they felt we're going in. Um, so like, like we were talking earlier about the two sides of the band, there's the studio Led Zeppelin and then there's the concert Led Zeppelin. To me, the concert was Led Zeppelin is like, okay, we're going on stage and we're going to go on and we're going to play. And we don't know where, you know, we're going to go, but we have a rough idea and we might be, you know, messed up. We might be a little drunk. We might have a few drugs in us. Some of us might be sick or under the weather or going through this. But it's like they seem to be a band that no matter what turmoil was going on, health-wise, uh, sobriety, whatever, one was they're not going to cancel a show. They're going to do their best to, you know, go on with the show and do their best to perform. 
and they're not going to curtail anything. They'll play as long as they can until they drop dead. And some of it might be great. And depending on their, you know, you know, attitude or whatever, or what the state of status of their health or whatever, it might not quite be up to their, you know, previous heights, but they were going to give it their best shot. And it was going to be just the four of them. They weren't going to rely on backing tapes. They weren't going to rely on additional musicians to help fill out the sound. It was just them four on the stage. And they were just going to do whatever they could, you know, do to the best of their ability at that point in time. And so each concert was like for that, for those people in the room only, they were playing to that moment. And they weren't playing to like, oh, this is going to be listened to by people with internet access 30, 40, 50 years down the road. And they're able to nitpick every note and say, well, this, you know, there's a flub here. No, they were playing those concerts strictly for the people that bought the tickets to that concert hall on that particular night. They didn't care how it would look 30, 40, 50 years down the road. And posterity is like looking back, okay, you know, he said this. And so I think that's another reason why we don't have as much Right. archival footage and tapes is this they just felt hey the concerts are here today gone tomorrow the people that were there can enjoy them but it's not to be relived because tomorrow is another concert and it's going to be a different show a different vibe and it's just so on and so forth well there you go thank you so much sean for sharing your insight and sharing your experience of the L.A. Forum and the Long Beach 1972 shows you attended. Amazing stuff. Always great to hear from someone that was in the building that witnessed these shows for people like myself who didn't have a chance to see Led Zeppelin. And as you guessed it, Sean attended so many shows, we weren't able to cover them all on this one podcast, but hopefully he'll be back for more episodes and dive deeper in these incredible West Coast shows he did see. But for now, let's wrap it up. Thank you for listening to episode 21. I am Mark McFall. Have a good night. Cheers.